Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and how are you all doing today? Uh, in today's episode of Dive Hot Weekly, I want to revisit a dye that I've really only taken a really quick look at, and that dye is Dharma Fiber Reactive Dyes. Now, I've played with a lot of tie-dye kits, like Tulip One Step Tie-Dye, but there's a bit of hand waving in there because there's probably soda ash mixed in, we don't know exactly how much dye there is per bottle, and in general, if you want fiber reactive dyes and to get more consistent results, it does, it is better to go directly to a fiber reactive dye. But today, I want to use these fiber reactive dyes like acid dyes. If in your system you have acid, you can use them very much like you would use acid dyes, and so a lot of dyers out there actually prefer to use fiber reactive dyes from traditional acid dyes because when you have them, then you can, depending on the conditions, use them for either wool or cotton. So there's a lot of perks there. Today's video is sponsored by the viewer Patty French, and we are going to be dyeing 300 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, and we're going to do some kettle dyeing. I want to go to the basics and see how this compares to my experience kettle dyeing using acid dyes, and yeah, just see if there's anything I observe. So one perk of acid dyes is that you can get the dye baths to clear. Fiber reactive dyes will start to react with uh, water. And so in general, if you've ever done a tie dye t-shirt, you know that there's a lot of rinsing and washing that has to happen after. And honestly, I'm not sure what to expect here today, but we are gonna test it and see and try to use my acid dye conditions on these fiber reactive dyes. I pre-soaked our yarn in just some plain tap water for about an hour. I did add removable nylon zip ties to the yarn as an extra tie, and it's just an easy way to pull the yarn out of the pot without it getting tangled. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn or any other tools and equipment I'm using in this video, I do have links in the video description. In my dedicated dye pot, I have 20 cups of water, and it is very, very, very slowly heating up, mainly because I know this volume of water will take a while to heat up, and so I want it to be a little bit warm when we get started, but not at a boil. The dye we're gonna use today is the color grape. Since I'm dealing with dry dye powder, I'm now wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. We're doing 300 grams of yarn today, and I do want to be a little bit conservative with the amount of dye that we're using today. Uh, and that is because of the rinsing. Okay, so we've got a slightly over one and a half grams. This would be about a half percent depth of shade, 0.5% for the 300 grams of yarn that we're dealing with. Continuing on in my treatment of this like I would acid dyes, I am adding some warm tap water and then stirring it up to dissolve as best I can. I don't know why I'm so much more nervous around fiber reactive dyes, maybe because there's a chance that they could stain so much more, but uh, these are dyes that you do want to mix fresh every time. You do not want to store them in a dye stock because as we said, they can react with water. Whew, okay, I took a quick break to take off my mask now that things are in solution. Uh, I'm honestly not sure about the mechanism of this. And so it is possible that, uh, it's possible we could see something close to clearing, but I'm not, I don't want to get my hopes up at all. Uh, since we know we're going to be using all the dye, I did not measure the water. Um, it's probably a little over half a cup, um, but let's head over to the dye pot and start setting things up. I've had the heat on low for a little bit, and the water, I would say, is slightly warm, but not hot. And because of that, I am okay putting this plastic cup in the water because it is not hot enough where this cup will melt. But you can see this grape color. And I do believe the color shifts a bit as uh, the yarn is dyed, but we'll see. After quickly rinsing out that cup, I'm coming in with our 
yarn. I did go and squeeze out gently some of that pre-soak from it, um, but I wanted to give this a chance for the yarn to absorb as much color as possible. Okay, and now coming over with my tongs, um, you can see that like, I don't think any of this color is absorbing yet. We have not yet added the acid. When I lift it up, you can see the color gets lighter. But what this is doing is allowing us to access some of that color right away. And so maybe if it, it's gonna strike fast, we would see that. But I now wanna add one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of white vinegar. This will give us that proportion of two tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water. That is what I frequently use with acid dyes. And very, very carefully, I'm raising and lowering the yarn in here um, and increasing the heat. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I am putting the lid on, which I don't do a lot, uh, mainly because I want to try to minimize any splashing that will happen if the heat comes up too high. Ideally, I do want to be just below a boil, um, but I will keep an eye on the temperature. You can see we're getting steamy, but it'll take some time for uh, it to heat up completely. Uh, I do think I'm going to let this sit for 40 minutes and then we'll come back and check on it and see what the color in the pot is doing. Since I mostly dye wool, I can't see myself transitioning to having a big stash of fiber reactive dyes instead of acid dyes. I have a big, big stash of acid dyes right now, and I think that that's probably where I will spend most of my time investing in my resources. But I currently only have four different fiber reactive dye colors, and I think I've got like a navy, a purple, a turquoise, and a black. And so I definitely need to get more to expand my arsenal, especially getting my hands on some primaries so then I can mix colors. So I do hope to play around more with fiber reactive dyes. I'd like to use them on t-shirts. I haven't done that yet. I'd like to try speckling. I'd like to try different immersion techniques like I like to do with acid dyes. Uh, goodness. Oh, I'd like to try dip dyeing to break them. Uh, there are multiple, multiple different blacks that you can see on Dharma's website. And that's because they all break slightly differently. And I think that that would be really fun to explore and play with and see if you can get breaking with just, you're, you're probably most likely to see it with hand painting, kind of like when I did the speckling with Wilton's Violet with the fork many, many years ago, I would expect you would see breaking in that kind of situation. We might not see it with dip dyeing like we do with food coloring, but it would still be really, really fun to explore. I am currently filming this video on March 29th, 2020. And so currently my Etsy shop is still operating. And in general, if you wanna learn more about how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find uh, information at the listing that'll be in the video description. The slots are more limited right now than they were say in January or February, just because there's a lot of uncertainty and I want to make sure that I am able to deliver these videos and the yarn to you. Um, so if it's not available, feel free to message me on Etsy and we can chat about how things are going <laughs> at the moment. I know I said 40 minutes, but I did just come and check in on the yarn a moment ago and wanted to show you guys what I saw. Okay. What you can see is that there's still a little bit of color in the pot, but it has mostly cleared within 20 minutes, which is awesome. This is a timeline that is very, very similar to what I would expect with acid dyes. So it is behaving similarly. Now, whether or not we'll see complete exhaustion, that, I mean, I, I, I still don't know, but I am gonna leave this on low heat for another 20 minutes. And you know what? One, two, three, 
mm, four to five more tablespoons of white vinegar won't hurt anything. The nice thing is that the color has cleared enough that I'm optimistic with the washing of the yarn, but I mean, we still just don't know. <laughs> So hopefully the added vinegar may or may not help and we'll wait that extra 20 minutes and come back and see. 40 minutes are up. And let's see what we can see. Oh my gosh, it's cleared. That's amazing. Our dye bath cleared. That is awesome. And to think, I was absolutely nervous going into this. I. Normally, I probably would have gone for a 1% depth of shade with one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, but I was so nervous about possibly felting this with overwashing that I did less. This worked great! All right, I'm now going to turn off the heat and we are gonna remove the yarn to set it aside to let it cool. And as for our dye bath, I plan to use that for a leave no dye behind, but we've got a beautiful, almost lavender-ish purple here. Let's wash our yarn. So at a very quick first glance, it's hard for me to tell about the evenness of this color because it does seem like, you know, one skein might be deeper but it's hard to say with light and shadow right now and with some of the yarn being more saturated and less saturated with water that adds some dimension to it and it's making it a little difficult for me to evaluate that shade. Now I am seeing some slight bleeding uh, which is something that I wouldn't expect to see with acid dyes. I will say that my tap water does run slightly acidic. Uh, if it were basic, I would expect to see some more disruption. I'm now adding some clear dish soap. The water I'm using is cool. Um, not the coldest, but that's because the coldest is very, very cold, but I wouldn't call it warm. So let's see, I do wanna take care and not rub the yarn too, too much in this stage because I don't want to risk felting it, but we are seeing bleeding. So even though it did look like the dye exhausted in our dye pot, um, maybe it was just so dilute that we didn't really see it. Um, but I think that with fiber reactive dyes, some rinsing is to be expected. So I'm gonna keep watching this and then I will check back in. All right, after several rinses, let's see, we are clear. Um, so I'm now gonna take this yarn, put it through my Nina Soft spin dryer to spin out the excess liquid and then we will hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. We do have some unevenness in this colorway. Again, I think it's hard to say, but this purple right here is absolutely lighter than that purple. Um, and this whole third skein feels lighter than the other two. It is subtle, but that's the way it feels. Honestly, I kind of want to re-skein all of this. I'm not sure if I'm going to. If I do, I will insert some footage or some pictures of what the yarn looks like reskeined. Normally, I am completely team leave things as they are guide. But in the case of a semi-solid tonal yarn like this, I think that reskeining would help us see the average blend of the colors to get a sense if these front two skeins are actually significantly deeper than this third one. Um, and again, there might be like a hair of a difference, but it is fairly subtle. Which brings me to my caution for hand dyed yarn alternate skeins every couple of rounds. Um, if you were to say knit a scarf and go one, two, three, you might notice a difference in the dye lot of the third, even though things were all dyed in the same pot. So after doing this 
I think that I can say that using fiber reactive dyes like acid dyes is not my favorite technique. There are so many fiber reactive dye colors out there, but that extra washing gave me anxiety and I just didn't love it. Um, the yarn is not felted. It is a little bit, say, stuck together, probably from that washing, but it does pull apart easily. You still see all of the definition of the plies. You can untwist the yarn and see the plies are all separate. It is not felted. Um, but, you know, this is something to caution with those extra rinsing steps. Uh, if there's the closest I've had to creating felted yarn, was I think back in the first Rit Dye More Synthetic video that I did when I had to wash and wash and wash that wool yarn, and we did have some light felting on the strands. Um, this I don't call felting, it's just like, it could become light felting if I had done like another five washes or something, just from that little bit of agitation of moving the yarn around and squeezing it out. The final color is really pretty. I'm happy with the tonal yarn. I wish we had more pigmentation, but giving that rinsing at the end, I'm a little scared to bump this up to a 1% DOS, where we had one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. The ties, I think the ties might ha be superwash here. There's a really pretty, almost glazed look to them that I am a little excited by, and I like that increased pigmentation and that color in there. I do want to buy more fiber reactive dyes. I think I mentioned earlier that I at least want to make sure I have some primaries um, and maybe a few other basic colors so that way I can mix. I love tie dyeing t-shirts, but a perk of tie dyeing a t-shirt is that you can throw it in the washing machine for those final rinses. You're not doing it by hand. And so, yeah, that perk is not something that we can really underestimate. So while this not, might not be my favorite technique and I'm not running out to go and replicate this technique, there are some things that I'm really happy about. I'm happy that I went and played with another dye that I haven't used as much. And I think, honestly, some of my discouraged feeling right now is because I'm not as comfortable with these dyes as I am with acid dyes. And so it feels a little unfamiliar, a little different, and honestly, a little scary. It's sometimes scary to go and try something new. And I love trying new things and trying them on camera, um, but it's okay if things don't work out exactly the way you liked. And one of the big things about trying new things is to learn what you do like, so then you can go forward and create fun, beautiful colors. I know a lot of dyers who prefer to use fiber reactive dyes, and I think that that is great. Um, but there's a lot of personal preference when it comes into all these color techniques. So keep that in mind. Patty French, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you will love your purple yarn. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I try to publish two videos a week and you don't want to miss any of it. And so that bell icon should give you a notification whenever a new video comes out. For more of my yarn dyeing adventures, please check out the Dye Pot Weekly playlist. I, in the video description, I always have a lot of information from the yarn bases I use uh, to where you can find me on social media and even some playlists like Dye Pot Weekly, Leave No Behind and things like that. So it's always worth checking out. It's a great place to check for information about these projects. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.